Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Laurence and I make art videos. Today I have an exciting project. It's my best friend's birthday at the end of the month. And I thought that it would be such a fun birthday gift to her to make her a palette of all of my favorite colors because she's an artist as well. She paints with watercolors just like I do. And I recently got so many colors that I don't think she has. And I love them so much and I really want to share them with her. I think it's, it's so much fun sharing a passion and being able to make your friend discover what colors you like. And I think that a lot of the colors that I bought recently, she would love in her paintings. So I got this little palette, the Mangyo palette. I already have two of these right now. Let me show them to you. I have this one, which is my the palette that I currently use. And these are really cool. These are super compact. You have a thumb ring here that I have to say I never use. But yeah, you can open them. I put a paper in there um, on which I put the name of the colors and a swatch. So I don't forget which colors I put in my palette. And I put some half pans in there. I could have put some full pans as well, but I like being able to... Well, I like having more colors. And this is the palette that I use when I travel or when I do plein air. So I want to have a good variety, but I could have put either full pans or a mix of half and full pans. Uh, but this is what I did. And I also have one spot where there's no paint in here. So I could add another paint. I have a couple new paints that I could, I could do a little contest to decide which one I put in here. Yeah, so these are some of my favorite colors. I think soon I'll have to update this palette because as I just told you, I recently got a bunch of new colors that I'm in love with. So maybe soon you'll see me rearrange these colors. But yeah, so I have this, pa this palette here and I also have another one. This was the first one that I got in fact, but uh, when I rearranged it, I decided to put new colors in this one and I needed a place to put the old pens that I still had left but I, that I didn't put in this one. So this is kind of my palette for the leftovers. I still don't want to waste them. I don't want to put them in the garbage. So this is where they are. When I replace some of these, I'm going to put them in here. Maybe I'll just do a new swatch card for these. But we'll see when we get there. So I already have two of these. So I got my friend one, her own palette. I also got new half pens because I did not have any left. So I already placed them in here. So this palette can contain 21 colors. Well, if you only use half pens. So I'm not going to put 21 colors in there because I want my friend to have room to put the colors she already has in here. So I'm sure she already has some colors that she owns that are some of her favorites. So I don't want to fill this up and then I want her to be able to play with it. I already created this little card. So she's going to be able to write the names of the colors. Well, it goes this way. She's going to be able to write the name of each color and do a little swatch in the rectangles that I drew. I drew them with a really pale color because I don't want to focus to be on the rectangles, but I still wanted to identify where these swatches would be since I'm not going to fill it up. So it's going to be easier for her. Another thing that I bought is these magnetic sheets. They come with like an adhesive on one side and a magnet on the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a bunch of little rectangles, stick them underneath the pants, because what I found over time is that, well, they can fall out. It's not tight enough, so they can just 
fall out of the palette and then you don't know which color is where. Let's say I had two greens, then maybe I'm not exactly sure which one's which. So I'm going to cut and paste a bunch of little magnets behind every pan. In fact, it's just a middle row that isn't really secure because if I can show you, there's like this metal thing that holds the pens in place. I'm guessing that maybe this palette is made to have only two rows, but there's so much space in the middle that, I mean, we have to use. But that's why I'm putting more pens in there, but yeah, they're not very secure. So I'm going to secure all of them, even these, using the magnetic sticker. And then we're gonna have a look in my swatch book. I recently swatched all of my watercolors that I own. You might have seen this video. If not, it's gonna be up there. I'm gonna link it. You should go watch it if you want to see a very relaxing video. So yeah, I swatched all of my colors in here. I have three pages. I'm going to choose my top favorites, the ones that I don't think that she has. Of course, I'm, I think I'm going to put like all my Daniel Smith and my Schmincke that I recently got because they're amazing. I know she already has a lot of Van Gogh watercolors, so I don't think I'm going to put any in there unless I really love it, which I don't know. We'll see. But first, we will cut the metallic sheets, stick them underneath, and then we'll see. Okay. Too long so that's good so what i found is that it helps it it's not like super magnetic but it still helps it won't fall off the palette unless maybe you shake it very like a lot but it does its job and once they're gonna be all stacked like this i think they're just gonna they're gonna hold up super well yeah Oh well, yeah, it's not the strongest magnet, but it's strong enough. But let's have a look in the swatch book. So this is my page of earth tones and my schminke colors. I know I'm going to put all of these for sure. I think she's going to love these colors. I think I'm also going to put lunar violet in there i don't think i'm going to put daniel smith but stone genuine just because i'm not sure that this is her color even lunar violet is a bit dark for her but i think she can find a good use for it but this one is very dark so i don't know if she has bangu interference white i think she would like it very much if she doesn't so maybe I'm going to put it in there. On these pages, let's see. She might already have Van Gogh titanium buff. So I don't think I'm going to put it in there. But I don't think she has a Daniel Smith version. And it's quite different. So I think this one I'm going to add in here. I might add these two. Windsor and Newton Yellow Ochre. Daniel Smith burgundy yellow ochre i really like them i was wondering if i added this one as well the windsor newton cadmium cadmium yellow hue because it's super pretty so maybe i'm going to add this one as well i'm for sure going to add dusk violet because it's so pretty 
the color separation in this color um the granulation it's amazing so i'm going to add it oh and i'm gonna add also daniel smith uh camion medium camion red medium hue because it's so pretty and it's a daniel smith color i don't think she has that one i'm going to put all my da my daniel smith blues that i have right here i'm going to add this green as well maybe this winter newton color and i think i'm going to add all of these <laughs> as well they're so pretty so that would be how many seven right here eight nine ten eleven twelve twenty six twenty six colors <laughs> no that doesn't work there's too it's too many i can't put that many colors in there I wanted to leave her some space, so I'm going to take these colors out, but then I'm going to have to make another choice because I want to leave at least a full row for her to be able to add her own colors. So well, let's just take these ones that I liked out and then refine our choice. But I think the Shminke ones, she would use them. They're so pretty. And it's in her color palette, so I think she would use them. I think these are non-negotiable, and also they're so special. I need to share them with her. Oh, I have Interference White right here. And Dusk Violet, I only need Dusk Yellow. Where is it? Yeah, that's too many colors. Too many. Okay, so the Shiminke, they all go for... Well, they all get in the palette. They don't go anywhere. They will stay here. They will go into the palette. So that's seven already taken. So that's a full row. God damn, I need to <laughs> I need to choose seven from these. Unless I just fill them all up. Is this more useful? Like having a full palette full of new colors that you haven't tried before or having a palette that's not completely filled but that you can transform and use when you travel okay let's see if i were to choose seven colors from this selection right here what do i think she would like the best i think she would like potter's pink for sure i think she would love this blue i think she would love this one Maybe this one too. Maybe a bright red. <gasps> Only two left. Oh, this one's good. They're all so good. Okay, not this one. Not this one. Let's have a look at our greens right here. We have a quite a selection of greens. So I already put this one and this one in here. This one's good too. Did I put it in there? Yes. I think she would like this one more than these greens. The hookers. So let's put the greens away. Sap green's great though. Oh, sap green's great. But the other greens we can put away. I put this blue. I put... No, that's it. I only put this blue. And I wonder if she would prefer this one though. I'm sure she already has a red that she can use. So I think we'll take this one out of our choice. I would love to add like a pale color or a yellow of some sort. Buff Titanium is really good. I'm hesitating between these two, so I think the others I can put away, so or I already did, so I was hesitating with these. Um, Bloodstone, I said I was going to put away because it's too dark for her, I think. This, I think, the Dusk Violet is so nice, I think I have to add it. <laughs> what about these blues? I really like this one. I think I could put these two, so... Let's put this one away. 
How many colors do I have now? I have seven up here, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I have another row right here plus five. That's too much, too many. Maybe, maybe if I, I don't put Schmincke Heart and Desert Green because there's maybe too much brown in it. Although she would love it, I think. Ah, oh, god damn, that's so hard. I think I really want to let her have a row that's that has nothing in there. Because that's fun. It's just that's just fun. So I need to choose seven. I'm just going to choose my personal favorites because the goal is to make her discover something different. So I will add buff titanium, dusk yellow, quinacridone sienna. I think Mayan blue, burgundy, butter's pink. Step green. And her friend's white, well, I mean, she, maybe she already has it, so I will just, I mean, if she needs it, she can come to my house and try it. This one, I had this one is good too, though. <laughs> I don't really use this one, so I'm gonna put it away. I think throw in blue is nice, but I have to make a choice, and I already have a lot of blues with the Schminky one, so I think we're just gonna put it aside. This one is really good as well, but if I have to choose between Quinacridone Sienna and Burnt Yellow Ochre, I forgot to put the word ochre here. Um, I think I like this one better. It's way brighter and you can always do it down a little bit if you need to. So I think this one's great. But I still love you. I still love you. <laughs> okay, but what do I do about this one? I'm thinking it's either sap green or this one. But I already have a couple of purples, so I think we're gonna keep sap green. So we have like a bigger variety here. We have some green, some yellow, some blue, some reddish and a pale color. I think that's what we'll do. All right, so we have a choice. Let's just put the other colors aside and work on um, our order. So these, I want them to be on their own row. If I was proceeding in color order, I might want to put these ones with the blues and these ones with the greens, but they're so special. I want to keep them together. I want to have like a row of Schmincke Harden super granulating colors. So I'm just going to like create an order between these. So I think this, I think this is a good order. And then for these, I'm going to proceed in color order. So the palest first, and then we'll just go towards, well, at some point we're gonna have to break, but these go well together. And then green, let's put the blue right here and then finish with the green. I think this is going to be the top row. This is going to be the bottom row and the middle will leave empty so she can add her own colors in there. I have my half pens right here. I have my swatch card right here. I'm gonna write the names right now and then we're gonna fill these up. And as we fill them, we're gonna swatch the colors and build our custom watercolor palette that way. Oh, and we also need some um, toothpicks because we don't want to leave some air bubbles so we mix them a little bit we make sure that all the corners are full of paint and then that's it i'm gonna write ds for daniel smith buff titanium ds burgundy yellow ochre quinacridone sienna sh for schmincke for them tundra pink S page Shire Blue and S H Desert Green. Okay. Now on to the fun part. 
So I took a little brush right here. I'm going to have to make sure that my brush stays super clean in between each swatch because I don't want it to taint the next swatch. So let's start with the Daniel Smith Buff Titanium. Make sure it's, it goes in the corners. And even if I do this, they, there can still be some air bubbles left. And at this point, it's not that big of a deal. Okay. And I can use the paint that's left on my toothpick to paint the swatch. All right. Then let's do Daniel Smith Burgundy Yellow Ochre. And the swatch. I always try to have a bit of a darker swatch on top and then go lighter towards the bottom, but sometimes it's, it's tough to do because it depends on how wet my brush already is. Sometimes it's wetter than I thought it was, so it gets a bit hard to do. I think that's good. If you haven't done this before, I mean, I, I encourage you to try because it's so relaxing. Father's Pink is quite a transparent color, so I won't be able to create like a swatch that's super dark. Very granulating too, so it's good. Such a good color. I love this color so much. I love a uh, warm green. So beautiful. So we're building our palette up slowly. Such a fun thing to do. I know the first time I created a palette like this, I did a video and someone suggested to put some uh, metallic sheets to stick them uh, underneath my pants and thank you so much to the person who suggested that because it works very well and I it was hard to find on in a store but I got them on Amazon you can't find anything on there unfortunately so it's always my last resort but I also don't have the time to go into like a thousand stores and hope that they have what I'm looking for. So for this one, I really want to add a lot, water, a lot of water when I create my swatch because I want her to be able to see how amazing it reacts with the water. So I'm hoping it's gonna create a nice effect. Yeah, so that's it for our first row. First row is finished. Oh, but then, okay. Yeah, so cute, so cute. Now we're gonna move on to our second, well, our the third row with the Schmincke watercolors. So let's start with Tundra Pink. I always say Tundra Rose because it's a French word for pink and there's also an English word that's, well, there's a rose, so I always, I always think that the name is Tundra Rose, but it's Tundra Pink. And in French, it's Tundra, so I keep saying Tundra instead of Tundra. I think it's Tundra, right? The English pronunciation, Tun and not Tun. Yeah. Excuse my French brain. For these two, I think I need to add as much water as I can to these tiny swatches because that's when you use a lot of water that the magic happens. And I hope that It shows that there's color separation. We'll see. For sure you see it more when uh, 
you swatch a bigger a bigger swatch but uh, we do what we can here now tundra violet these paints they're so creamy i hope the schminky ones dry well and pans i heard that they're creamy because they use honey instead of gum arabic and that honey does not dry well in a pan but then i went on the website to see if that was true and i saw that they used gum arabic so i'm hoping that it's indeed gum arabic that they use in these pans paints in these paints and that um well they will dry well because that would suck if they stayed wet forever it would not be very practical so far i can already see some color separation so i think we're good we are going to swatch now not swatching we're gonna fill up tundra blue Now let's do deep sea violet. It's very dark when you put it at mass tone, but then it creates beautiful colors. So let's add some water right now. Only three left after this. And see how it's important to have a swatch card because right here they all pretty much look alike you don't see too much of a difference so we you really need this to know which colors are which and also what they're going to look like on paper so next we will swatch forest blue which it's a it's a really interesting color i hope it shows well on this little swatch and uh, if i remember correctly i thought that this forest blue is Bit more of a green than a blue i think we'll see if it shows on the swatch yeah to me it looks a bit more like a green you can see that it's like a bluish green but but i, I remember that there was some color separation in this one and you could see some blue in there as well so i hope it shows Let's just remove a bit of the the water with this and but still it's super granulating we can see that very well this next one the shire blue i hope for this one we can see the color the color separation i mean there is so much of it in this color it's truly amazing i think my friend's gonna love this color i'm gonna link her instagram below she doesn't post that much these days but still she makes these beautiful like women bodies with a bunch of colors merging together it's super it's womanly you know I can see a bit of color separation already I hope we get to see more I'm just gonna leave it like this and we'll see and now we have our last one, Desert Green, which for me is one of my favorite colors. I don't know if she's going to like it as much because there's a lot of browns in there and I don't see her working with browns a lot, but maybe a touch here and there would be really pretty in her art. But either way, like you cannot not be amazed by this color. It's so good. Yeah, we already see the color separation in here. It's amazing. All right, so we filled everything we wanted to fill. Now we're just gonna add these empty half pens in there. And we're gonna wait a couple of days until everything is dried. I'm going to show you some close-ups and that's gonna be it so this is the point where my mic stopped working the batteries were dead but i finished filling up that row which i left empty as i said so that my friend can add her favorite colors in her palette then i put the swatch sheet that i created in the palette it's gonna stay in the lid as you can see the paints from the bottom row look pretty similar so I find that having a swatch sheet like this is super helpful. 
I always like doing that when I'm creating a palette. This is a couple of days later when the palette had dried. I don't know if you can see very well, but some of these paints have shrunk a little bit while drying. So before giving it to my friend, I topped some of these colors off. I would love to know which colors would be your top seven. Which one would you for sure put in a custom palette? Please let me know. Maybe I'm going to discover some new colors that I'm going to be very tempted to buy and try out. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe if you're not already. I will talk to you soon. Take care.